All right, welcome back, friends, to number two. And that is, I want to share with you that God is a God of miracles. And thank God he is, because I've had so many times in my life where financially, I didn't know what I was going to do, but God pulled through with a miracle. But not only is God a God of miracles, but God is a systems God. Well, that's a little, what does that mean? You know, God is a systems God? Well, let's, let's get into that, because... I want you to see where there's a potential trap for you in always believing for miracles. Now, God loves to do miracles. I mean, because his glory is manifested when he does it. You know, everybody's like, wow, that had to be God. Well, yeah, it did. And I've had many of those. But God is a systems God, and God uses systems everywhere. He uses systems everywhere. If you think about, first of all, you know, like we, we read out of Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, well, if you think about the systems that he put in place with the solar system, you know, and everything that he designed in the, in the stars and all of this stuff, the systems in that are amazing, powerful, uh, full of amazing genius that God designed the solar system. Uh, I heard it said that, you know, since the earth spins on a tilted axis, um, that do you know that if it's the only planet that does that, but if it were actually tilted one degree to the left or the right, or one direction or the other, plus or minus, whatever that angle is, that life on earth would cease because there's a system there that God designed and he finally tuned it. I heard about you know, the salt content of the ocean in, the, in our world. The world, the planet's covered, a large portion of the planet's covered with ocean. And most of that is salt water. Well, the salt content in the ocean is at a particular percentage. And if it was plus or minus by one percentage, again, that all life on earth would cease because it's a finely tuned system. God. And think about this. God is a systems God. Well, God created you and he gave you a digestive system. Well, you know right away when the system's not working. And you go, <laughs> you got to go see a doctor, go do something about that system, getting that system to work the way it's supposed to work. If systems are not working, get, get them fixed, right? Okay. So you already do that if, the, if your digestive system is not working. Or some people, you know, well, all of us are here because somebody's reproductive system worked. Okay? If their reproductive system didn't work, you wouldn't be here. Right? So God built systems. Reproductive system. Solar system. Digestive system. There's the ecosystem. All right? And that was mentioned before with the saline content of the oceans, etc. But God uses systems to create and to continue our existence. Like I said, God uses systems to create through the reproductive system and to continue our existence through the ecosystem, uh, the digestive system, all these others, and there's tons of them, other systems. So if, like we said before, if you look and see what are the fingerprints of what happened here? Well, God created you. God created me. God created this earth. And he set systems in place. So God created a system of provision and abundance for you and I. So it, there's plenty of wheat on this earth. You know, if you just had one grain of wheat, how quickly could you populate this earth with wheat plants? The number of years might surprise you, but it's not that many. Okay? Because of the of the power of a seed, right? Seeds grow and multiply. So the question might not be how many apples or how many seeds are in an apple, but the real question is how many apples are in a seed or how many apple trees are in a seed? You know, if you think about, well, this one friend of mine, he was telling me, he's, and he was a photographer, he said, can you imagine doing a time-lapse photography on an apple tree. He said, imagine this. He said that the apple tree, let's say it doesn't have any leaves, it's in the middle of winter, and then all of a sudden you see leaves come out. 
Then all of a sudden you see apples appear. Then all the apples just fall on the ground. Thump. Just like that, because you're doing time lapse. It's fast. Then you see all the leaves fall off, right? Then you see more leaves come out, more apples come out, and then all of a sudden they all fall off the tree. And then all the leaves fall off. And then you just see this year after year. Thump. Thump. In time lapse photography, you could show something like that in such an amazing, rapid way. Well, that proves to you that an apple tree is an apple producing system. So God has made systems like that all over the place where these systems provide for you and me. They are systems by which God brings provision to us and abundance. So God's systems contain all the provision and blessing that we will ever need. You could imagine being out, let's say you had a house in the desert and you lived there. That's where you lived. And it's always dry and you're always thirsty. Yet, what if there was a river just two miles from your home? Yet, during your lifetime, you never ventured away from your home more than a mile or a mile and a half. So you never saw this system of abundance that was designed for you. See, God has put in place systems for you and me to partake of his abundance. It says in uh, 2 Peter, it says that God has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. Well, everything we need for life, that means from day one of my life, God already planned out how much food I would need, how much provision I would need all along the way. And he set that aside for me. He made sure that that provision was available on the planet. Now, whether or not I go and eat or partake of that provision, or I'm able to get to that provision, doesn't tell us whether or not the system works. Really what it tells us are we working the system God created? So maybe if there's a river just two miles from your home, all you have to do is either move your home next to the river or cut yourself a new uh, channel from the river right over to your doorstep. How do you do that? Well, God will give us wisdom about how to partake of the systems he created. Okay? Now, God has set up systems. Um, you know, one thing I saw was that uh, in the in the book of Proverbs, it says, keep careful watch over your flocks and over your herds. It says, for you do not know uh, what, you know, danger will come or whatever on the land. But it also says, um, riches do not endure forever. But keep careful watch over your flocks and herds. God has uh, created systems for you and I to partake of all the abundance that he's already set aside for us. Part of the system that God created, he wants us to keep track of what we have. Uh, I wasn't watching my bills at one point, and I um, was struggling. I was struggling financially, but I wasn't watching my bank account, so I didn't really know how far behind I was. Well, one night, my wife, Nancy, was working in the church nursery, and this lady was there working with her and she said, Nancy, my husband and I decided to give you something. So she gave her a check for $100. Well, Nancy was so excited. When Nancy, after the church was over, Nancy and I were driving home and Nancy said, look, we got this check for $100. And so we were excited, you know, it was a Thursday night service. Um, so then on Friday at noon, Nancy calls me, said, Joe, can, or right before noon, she said, Joe, can you come home for lunch? I said, sure. What happened? Or what's up? She said, well, our friend is coming over. She said she called me this morning. She said when she got home last night, her husband said, so did you bless the Barlows? And she's like, yeah. He said, what'd you do? She said, well, I wrote him a check for $100. He said, $100? Honey, you were supposed to bless him. She said, honey, we didn't say, you would never agreed on how much I was supposed to write the check for. Well, he said, honey, you were at least supposed to put one more zero on there. So she called and said, Nancy, could I drop the check off, drop the rest of this off at lunch today? <laughs> sure. Now, after I went back, we did our bills, took that thousand dollars, went back and paid all our bills. And I looked, I didn't realize it, but I was $600 behind. I thought, thank God, you know, God was making up with a miracle, the difference. But see, honestly, the reason I needed a miracle is because I wasn't working God's system. 
I wasn't keeping careful watch over my flocks, like it says in Proverbs. It says, keep careful watch over your flocks. It says, riches do not endure forever. So, God says in that passage, you will have abundance and everything you need. So, because I wasn't working the system, God had to come in with a miracle. There may have been other ways for me to be provided for, but I wasn't keeping careful watch. I wasn't working the system God set up. Now, if you don't work with a system that God set up, you're going to need a miracle. And thank God that God is God and he likes to do miracles. But let's work the system. It's better to be blessed than to have to have a miracle. And here's where a really important piece of this is. If you fall in love with getting miracles from God, and thank God we can get them, because I could, I could keep you up from now till tomorrow night telling you all the financial miracles that God has done in my life. But I'll tell you this. If you want more and more miracles, you're going to need miracles. But if we'll learn that not only is God a God of miracles, and he'll help us get back on track, but God is a systems God, and God has a system for you to be blessed. And it's better to be blessed than it is to need a miracle. It's better to stay healthy using God's system of health and all the things that he's told us than to have to have a miracle to get yourself back on track. It's better to not live in poverty and have to have God do a miracle to get you back on track. It's better to live in the systems that he has set up. So let's explore those. I heard one guy say, you know, if you don't want to be poor, don't do what poor people do. <laughs> That's, that may sound derogatory to you, but a friend of mine was letting his car be repossessed. I said, man, wait, let me just, hold, let me just tell you something. I said, if you don't want to be poor, don't do what poor people do. Poor people, they're the ones who just let their car be repossessed. They don't realize the devastation they're working. They're breaking the system. So remember, God is a God of abundance, and God is a God of miracles, and God is a systems God. But if you always want miracles, you'll always need one, and you will live from crisis to crisis. But God has a plan that's better. And he wants you to live by his systems of abundance and provision. And we're going to explore more of these in the sessions to come. Thanks for joining. God bless.